Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So uh, just a short video here for you. Uh, I'm just doing a video on how to recalibrate your wideband O2 sensor. Now this particular car has uh, Innovative Motorsports LC2 wideband, but I think most of them have a similar procedure. But anyway, I, I recalibrated the, the sensor, but it didn't really solve my problem, which I kind of suspected it wouldn't. Um, I think I got a must have a small exhaust leak and uh, that's the reason the readings it's usually around 1300 or lower RPM is where the wideband reads way off way lean I would say uh, must be a small exhaust leak and and the exhaust exhaust pulses are pulling some air in by the sensor which is throwing it off so I'll have to look into that but anyway, uh, unfortunately, we're not going to have any good uh, car videos for you this weekend. Uh, Do-it-yourself videos is about all I'm going to be able to, to get because uh, i got to work all weekend and Jonathan, uh, he's got family coming for the weekend. But anyway, hopefully next weekend we'll get something good for you. Uh, like I, I've said before, that Ford Mustang Shelby GT500, we definitely want to have him back on the channel, which, as far as I know, he's willing to come back on. And uh, the 94 F1 Camaro seems to be quite popular. So we're hoping to do another video or two with him. So anyway, guys, uh, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one. Hey, guys, so car's back on ramps again uh, I'm just gonna show you how to recalibrate a wideband O2 sensor so I guess we gotta get under the car okay so the first thing I gotta do is take out the wideband do just leave it just leave it free hanging in the air like that and then you got to disconnect it also here you go so once you get the wide band hanging out in the free air you got to disconnect the sensor which uh, is right here you just press down on this it comes right off so now we've got to go back into the car. Okay guys, now we're back in the car. So I got the sensor hanging out in the free air and I got the sensor disconnected. So now the control module or whatever you call it is up under here. So I got to remove this panel. Drop this panel out of the way. Just leave it hanging. Okay, so this is the control module here. So what I got to do is turn power on, and it should flash green and then red, I believe. So it said to let it flash red for 30 seconds. Okay, that should be long enough. Let's turn power back off. Now I gotta go under the car again and hook the sensor back up. Okay, now I got the I got the sensor hooked back up, still hanging in free air. So I'll turn power on and it should calibrate. I think it's supposed to go a solid green, I believe, when it's fully calibrated. Okay, so that means it's calibrated, so you gotta 
shut the power off. And now I gotta go under the car again and put the sensor back in. Hey guys, I got the I got the wideband sensor back in. I got the panel back up in on the dash. So I'm gonna I'm gonna connect with uh, HP tuners. During parking mode, event detection recording one occurred. Okay, we're gonna start her up. Now this may not cure the problem. Uh, could be that there's an exhaust leak is why it was reading so high, but we'll see. Anyway, as you can see, while we're waiting for the wideband to warm up, I got the airflow ratio on the tablet now and my injector duty cycle. They weren't working before, last time I had the tablet hooked up. It's working now, so we got to wait for the sensor to warm up before it'll start reading properly. <clears throat> She's still reading quite high, or quite lean, I mean. So that might not have fixed it. So if that didn't fix it, my guess is there's a exhaust leak. So it's, the exhaust pulses when it's idling, and at low RPM, We'll pull air in past the sensor and it'll trick the sensor into thinking it's uh, leaner than what it is. That's the only thing I can think of. But anyway, that's how you recalibrate the sensor. It might not uh, fix my problem, but like I say, that's, I would say that's the, uh, an exhaust leak, a small one, pulling some air in there and tricking the sensor. But anyway, that is the proper way to to recalibrate your sensor. Anyway guys, uh, not much of a video, but it could help somebody who wants to know how to recalibrate their wideband. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.